This is the other repair job that I have in the shop that I've had for some time and I'd like to go ahead and try to uh, get this thing done. Uh, belongs to a viewer named Bill. He's, he's local to my area here and contacted me a few months ago and you know gave me the load down on this and uh, asked me if I'd be interested. So I thought it would be a pretty decent little repair project for the shop here and for, for the channel. So what this is is part of a power hacksaw. This is a Craftsman branded power hacksaw that was actually built by Covell. Uh, he says somewhere around the 1950 era is uh, when this was built. And this little power hacksaw was a purchase that he made earlier in the year at a machine shop auction that happened over in Panama City. I believe it was called K&K &K Machine Shop or something of that nature. And I, I even had the flyers for it too, man. It was a, a heck of a place. They had a lot of machines there. But evidently, Bill went there and scored this little power hacksaw. But he says it lived, uh, lived a hard life, and he's having to do some repairs on it. And this particular repair that needs to be done is uh, out of the scope of his uh, level of being able to do it at, at his, uh, his shop there, I guess. So what it is, this end right here, and he's already done some milling on there trying to remove it, but there was a broken bolt in there. It's a, I believe it's a quarter 20 bolt that goes in there. And what that does is there's a, there's a plate that mounts here. If you know anything about power hacksaws and it, and it pulls that plate there, which actually uh, pulls this bar that tightens the blade up that goes right there. So he tried to remove it. Now he didn't get anything broke off down in there, but he tried to mill it out of there and I guess it just, somebody bottomed it out and it won't come out. So what we're going to do is try to set this thing up in the milling machine, hopefully with an angle plate or something and get it clamped off real good. You know, put an angle plate on the mill table and come in here and go ahead and try to uh, drill the rest of that bolt out and mill the rest of this little pocket out that he had started. So what we'll probably do then is... Uh, bring it over here and we'll just braise this hole back up with some brass and then we'll go back to the mill and you know machine it off and drill and tap a new hole in there for it so that's what we're going to do there it's been repaired here already with a, a braise and that's holding just fine so we're not going to worry about that and that's really all that it needs on uh, for my part of, of this repair here so we're going to go and start getting her set up and probably have to set up some kind of like fence that this thing will go up against so that that way once we get it brazed we can go back to the mill clamp it back in the same location and be hopefully within a few thousandths of where we uh, found the center of this bolt here So we got a fence established there that's up against this part of the casting that we can come back into. So what I'm going to do is uh, straddle it with a tuning fork style clamp. Just getting some studs ready. And this is where it can get a little tricky doing it by yourself. We're going to see if we can prevail. Usually what happens is the nut won't screw all the way down and get tight on the threads. Or it falls apart like that. I didn't have all my stuff ready. Okay, looks like we're going to... Oh, that one's getting tight <laughs> on the threads anyway. All right, so you just got to be careful doing it like that so you don't, you're not pivoting on one side and not pulling on the other. Just looking down it, and it looks like that's going to work good. So this is a machined area here. That's where we're going to have our, most of our holding area there. So I think that'll probably work right there let's go ahead and just 
Shouldn't take a whole lot of pressure to hold this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take our other clamps off. And that should be our position for our machine work there. And we'll probably give it some more support up here. Try to make it a little more a little bit more rigid. Provided an extra C clamp on top to give the top a little bit more rigidity here. So we're gonna go ahead and swing it around. I got a pointer in the chuck just to try to help eyeball that. And I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room here, and as well as a little bit here on the uh, X and Y axis so I can get this around here close and then just be able to kind of move the table a little bit. I thought I had it <laughs> loosened up there. I got the camera right where I've got to stand to position this. All right, that looks pretty close. We're going to come out just a touch more. Yeah, I think that'll work right there. You just reclamp everything and uh, you know get it all locked down. I'm using a two flute quarter inch end mill just to visually try to locate the center of where the bolt is. I just turn it two directions there and I just try to line the edge of the flute up with the edge of the bolt. So I'll turn it this way, move the table this way, turn it side to side and move the table that way. And that gives me sort of a location of where I think the center of the bolt is. So I zero the readout and we've got, let me re-zero it because I repositioned it there. And we've got our table snugged up. And what I want to do is spot it with uh, this little short drill first and then we're going to try a left hand drill to see if it will actually back out of there seems pretty tough just that little bit already All right, I'm just kind of letting it dwell there and letting it center up because I did see the drill trying to kick off a little bit to the side. So if you just kind of hold it there, it'll sort of find its way to the middle. So we got us a center point. That's going to be a little bit too big. So I guess we're going to have to go with our, with our 1 8. I'm going to have to go touch this up. Let me see if I can find another one real quick. We'll try this one. This is a 4.2 millimeter left-handed drill bit. This is a viewer give me. These, I don't know what the brand is. Presto, made in the UK. Get it good and tight. And our hope is that that little bit of speed there, that drill will grab that material and spin it out of the hole. Doesn't look like it's doing it, man. That thing is stuck in that hole, man. Yeah, we just went all the way through. Yep. Well, our left-hander didn't work today. 
We'll just have to drill it out of there. Let's try one more. Does not want to come out. Wow. All right, we got our half inch end mill in there and we've, we're centered up where we want the bolt. So we're just going to go ahead and plunge that down to the bottom to open up a clean hole. And then we'll take it out and we'll just braise it all in. Fill it all back up. using the, the hand crank on the knee over here. Okay, we're set up to do our brazing and we're going to try my Sony camera see if we can get you a shot and I don't have uh, auto darkening set up on it yet but I do have an ND filter on there that might work a little bit to be able to see some of this brazing so we're just going to try it and, and see what it looks like okay so this is the brazing rods that I'm going to be using just it's bronze uh, flux coated bronze here's the this is the pack right here, just uh, some stuff that you pick up at air gas, low fuming bronze. Flux coated wire, 1 8 diameter. So we got one that uh, from the last job I did. So we're going to start with this one and then work our way to a new one. So I'll do some preheat on it and try to get the whole thing kind of warm. And then I'll start focusing on this area, getting it, getting it red so that the, uh, the brazing wire will a flow down in there and actually stick to that bore in there. All right, so we're going to give it our best shot. Here we go. So I've got the acetylene set to a 10 psi and then the oxygen about 20, between 15 and 20 on the gauge. It up just a bit so we get it hot.
think we have it, guys. All right. Make sure you turn your gas and your oxygen off as soon as you're done so you don't forget it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, I've got this a fire blanket over here. I need my little insulating tiles. I didn't grab one. We'll just kick it on a brick right there so it's not sitting directly on the <clears throat> directly on the, uh, the fiberglass there. Okay. So we'll just leave that wrapped up. It'll take a little while to cool that way. This will help it kind of cool a little more slowly than just leaving it in the, uh, the atmosphere here. Just kind of contain it a little bit and we'll bring you back whenever it's time to get back to it. So we got our part cool. It's still just slightly warm, but it's not hot at all. I can hold it. So we got our that shiny stuff on there. That's your flux. It's like glass. It'll pop off there. I'm going to take a wire brush and actually brush it real good, and clean it up. So there's our there's our braze. What'd you guys think of the new footage, man? I was pleasantly surprised at how well that video looked. So we'll definitely have to keep that in mind for some uh, future welding. Okay, so we should be right back to where we had started because I've got it pulled up against this clamp here and it's setting uh, this way right because it's not hitting the casting on the bottom. So, should be good. I'm going to go ahead and get these snugged up so that it's right where it needs to be. I just got to run it down. One of the things that's really nice about having this digital readout here, you can keep up with your zero location very, very easy. So that's where we drilled our hole, right there. So we've got a three quarter end mill in there, and I wanna, what I want to do is mill it flat. We're just going to mill it until it cleans up. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit of where we just touched the cast iron on the outside there, okay? So we got some hard spots, which is to be expected whenever you're brazing onto cast iron. Sometimes you get some hard spots right at the edge of the cast, and sometimes you may have a little bit of that flux that's still caught in there somewhere, which is extremely hard. It'll instantly dull your, your cutter. So I'm putting a half inch carbide end mill in here just to kind of graze the top of that cut off because we're right where we need it. but. I just don't really like the way that it looks or feels, so we're just going to skim it with some carbide here. It's not going to take but just a few thousands, really. I just want to come down until it touches. Looks like so, so you can hear it.
Okay, getting uh, close to the end here. So let's go ahead and spot it, drill it, and tap it. All right, just double check, we're zero, zero. We're gonna tap it quarter 20. So I'm using a number seven drill. That's tap size for quarter 20. see here I'm gonna zero out my Mitchell toy scale estimated approximately three quarter inches deep all right that's three quarter deep right there I'm just gonna stop because that's all the depth that he needs for that chamfer it This is a gift given to me by Phil of Phil's Projects on YouTube. The handmade spring-loaded center. Half-inch shank. I'm starting with a a starter tap or uh, also known as a taper tap the spring loaded center seems pretty nice got a long reach to it too okay there's the bottom there All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna take this one out. I'm gonna go in there with a with the plug tap. I have a three tap set here: starter, plug, and bottom. And we'll go ahead and run it run it all the way down. I do use just a drop of oil. I'm just using my regular uh, dark cutting oil to lubricate it. Okay guys, this one's all done. Our little repair job for our viewer, Bill. It looks like he's gonna get back in business now, so he'll be able to take his, uh, there's a plate, again, it goes right here, and it kind of pivots, and I believe there's a notch milled in it so that it grabs this, and, or it pivots in the middle, I'm sorry. So it pivots in the middle, and you tighten down on the bolt, it actually pulls this back, if I got that. It'll pull it back like that and tighten the blade up. So hopefully that'll work out pretty good for Bill and he can get this little Craftsman Power Hacksaw back in working condition. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. It was a good day out here in the shop getting this done and getting some other work done around here. So we'll see you next week, okay?